happy morning my dear students i am glad that i meet you again in the next uh, recorded online class of chapter 8 wind storms and cyclones so this lesson was already um, uh, carried out uh, by mr pal raj but uh, time being uh, since he, he was not able to complete this lesson Uh, I am here to start, revise what he has taught, and complete this lesson for you. Uh, winds, storms, and cyclones. Uh, my dear students, we have already learned about wind in chapter four. Heat, uh, a gentle movement of air, is actually known as wind. And we have learned in that lesson how wind is formed. i remember i have revised this question uh, this concept even in our revision class before midterm exam in a particular area uh, during a summer season especially where uh, because of the sun heat the air becomes warmer uh, you all know that uh, warm air is denseless and because of that it starts to move upwards whatever object that is denseless will start to uh, move upwards or it floats pushing the uh, molecules or the substances that are dense or uh, which are more dense so like that this warm air starts to move up and in that particular in that same particular area a cavity is created because of the movement of air because of the absence of air and uh, air from outside starts to get in and this is how we get wind i think this is the third time i'm re repeating this concept don't expect someone to repeat again so keep in your mind okay so uh, this is how we get wind and uh, actually as i said in the beginning wind is none other than the movement of air if that air is cool then that wind is actually known as breeze okay so breeze wind and uh, e uh, movement of a strong wind or movement of wind with a force is actually known as storm um when there is a, a movement of air in a cyclic manner okay so uh, then that is actually known as cyclone and all these are basically based on atmospheric pressure what is an atmosphere you all know uh, the earth is surrounded by uh, air to particular distance i can even use the word gas okay so uh, uh, um, gas is uh, gas is found around the earth up to some approximately 200 kilometers and above that you don't have gases and you have only empty space or vacuum um, so this uh, space where air is occupied or gas is filled around the earth is actually known as atmosphere and Uh, this air exerts a pressure and that is actually known as atmospheric pressure uh, this uh, pressure is actually due to the weight of the molecules that are found in the air this is the concept <coughs> right so 
um i think uh, now you, you are aware of what is meant by breeze what is meant by wind what is meant by storm and what is meant by cyclone and finally you should also know everything is because of i mean all these four concepts are because of none other, none other than atmospheric pressure okay and uh, you should be knowing also what is meant by pressure and what is meant by atmospheric pressure the pressure that is found in the atmosphere is known as atmospheric pressure okay so uh, uh, there are many characteristics of wind the two main characteristics of wind are one wind has direction and uh, it has speed okay again i repeat the main two characteristics of winds are direction and the speed so in what direction it moves that is known as direction either it is moving towards south or southeast northwest okay so that is actually known as that is actually known as direction and in what speed it moves okay so this is these are the two properties of or two characteristics of wind one direction and second one is speed so you have already learned uh, that is uh, we ca- we are uh, we are we measure as direction as well as wind speed by means of uh, certain devices one we have this wind vane you might have seen in uh, maybe in movies or in your village somewhere in the village where uh, there will be a vane above which you come across a cock or a rooster okay an image of a rooster so this is, it need not to be a rooster uh, it may be some other animal or some other uh, uh, image uh, below that you have a arrow mark in that horizontal uh, structure you one end you have an arrow mark which shows the direction of the wind the other end is actually known as tail this is how the wind vane is uh, um, modified the wind vane is uh, manufactured okay so uh, when uh, wind blows what happens the pointer starts to move uh, based on a central axis so it starts to move and shows the arrow mark shows in which direction the wind blows for example if the pointer moves towards uh, east which means the wind is moving towards the uh, east or i would say uh, the wind is eastwards okay so this is how uh, the wind direction is uh, measured by using wind vane then second is uh, wind speed um keep this in mind if you have not uh, if you don't know this uh, a device to measure the wind speed that is the device is known as anemometer in those days all devices not only anemometer all devices comprises of a uh, pointer which points uh, or which uh, denotes the speed of a um, particular thing for example here anemometer where you have a pointer which indicates uh, how much speed the wind is uh, moving but nowadays all these po- pointers needles are not everything is digital okay so nowadays we come across the same same anemometer with a digital uh, display of the wind speed but anemometer is the same okay what is anemometer anemo means so wind so the meter meter means measuring okay so the device that is used to measure wind is known as anemometer okay again i repeat one Uh, we learned what is meant by a breeze wind storm cyclone atmospheric pressure okay five concepts and based on this first topic related to wind that is the two characteristics of wind one is wind speed and second one is wind direction there are some few experiments to prove air pressure in the first experiment you take a tin can okay a can made of tin uh, it should not be uh, closed okay remove the lid and uh, uh, take a, a small amount of water and boil the um, can in a bunsen burner using a wire gas wire gas to uh, evenly distribute the heat and it also provides a support to the can when the water starts to boil just to stop the burner close the tin cans uh, 
very safely because it will be very hot okay so tightly close the tin can with the lid and immediately uh, take the hot can and uh, uh, allow water that is a uh, normal warm normal water uh, maybe tap water to flow on it so immediately what happens is the can starts to crush by itself so what is behind this uh, experiment that is when you boil the water in a can water starts to evaporate okay and they go away from the can which is filled with the air and uh, when you close the air i mean when you close the container tightly now a pressure will be maintained inside and when you uh, f uh, allow the water that is tap water to flow through or flow on it uh, on the can what happens you come across a pressure gradient that is the steam that is found inside the container okay so already boiled water boiled so some what some water vapor went out and there will be some steam inside the can and that steam starts to become uh, water that is the gaseous form of water becomes liquid form of water and so what happens because if because of this uh, there will be a, a some empty space formed because air becomes water so that the space will become vacuum and to maintain that already you have a pressure outside which exerts on the can so since there is a, a low pressure created the air starts to um, the air makes the can to crush i hope you understand okay so everywhere you have a pressure okay so wherever you come across air you come across uh, the pressure exerting on that on any object okay so here <clears throat> when you boil the water water becomes steam and that steam will be found inside the can when you close the lid once when you cool actually when you uh, when you open the tap water the steam inside becomes cool and it becomes water so actually a uh, gas is reduced into liquid so that gas space is uh, empty now and to maintain that air pressure the pressure of the air that is outside starts to uh, enter inside but there is no place to enter and because of that uh, it uh, this force that is exerted by the air outside crushes the can so this is the basic principle or basic concept behind this first experiment okay this shows the air pressure okay you may think air pressure is just just like that okay why we are learning this because we are going to learn about storms and cyclones everything is i said in the beginning everything is based on air pressure so in those cases uh, you, you are going to learn later um, uh, very heavy objects are will be thrown away like elephants or cranes or buses etc or sometimes buildings are thrown away from one place to other due to storms or cyclones and that much force or that much pressure air contains so as maybe in lo before in uh, previous classes we have discussed never underestimate anything especially never underestimate any creations of god you may think it is a small ant it is a small microns but their effect will be that much severe than you uh, imagine okay i hope you can understand okay so this is why we are learning slowly about this Uh, various properties of this atmospheric pressure because we are going to learn about storms and cyclones <coughs> which is mainly because of pressure and the effect of those storms and the effect of those cyclones are because of pressure the second experiment we are going to learn is high speed winds are accompanied by reduced air pressure Uh, i don't know how far you understand this heading but uh, i'm going to give two uh, uh, experiments to prove about this air pressure <clears throat> in my hand i have a small strip of paper so when i hold this paper on one side any one corner what happens is the paper goes down okay any one corner if i hold the paper goes down this may be uh, because of gravitational force and second one is the air pressure exerting on this paper i hope you understand okay so this may be because of uh, gravitational force and secondly it is also because of the air pressure exerting on the paper such that 
the paper goes down so what i'm going to do is that <coughs> i'm going to blow this paper okay i'm going to blow air near one end of the uh, paper so what happens here the paper starts to move up that is already you have a pressure uh, from the above which pushes the paper downwards and i also have a pressure i'm i'm just giving a pressure from one corner which uh, pushes the paper upwards so what happens the more i give pressure the more the paper will start to uh, stand up, appears like standing erect okay uh, let me do that so first let me give a gentle uh, pressure so now you can understand now i am going to give more pressure and i am going to give still more pressure air pressure by blowing the wind so this shows okay from this experiment what you understand is that when when there is an air pressure exerting on the paper which pushes the paper downwards when i give equal or more pressure from downwards so what happens this air pressure makes the paper to float or uh, uh, to be erect so this means this is the heading of this topic that is high speed winds are accompanied by reduced air pressure so high speed wind so i'm blowing wind at one corner i'm blowing wind at one corner so already there is a pressure exerted so when you compare that to pressure and the wind so what happens this, this pressure uh, is less compared to the wind that i blow okay that is the topic that is high speed winds are accompanied by reduced air pressure so high speed wind can make anything to float or anything to fly okay compared to a normal atmospheric pressure that is exerted on the paper again this is also related to storms and cyclones okay even though you have a, a, a pre atmospheric pressure that is maintained but uh, when there comes a high force that is storm okay a, a movement of wind in a high force what happens the pressure uh, which should be maintained is not actually maintained and this is why I, I, as i said in the previous experiment buses can fly i mean it can be thrown away buses can be thrown away elephants can be thrown away or uh, a whale or a crane sometimes even buildings uh, will be scattered into pieces and that much of, uh, force or that much pressure is exerted by a storm okay then third to prove the same that is to prove high speed winds are accompanied by reduced pressure uh, i have uh, another experiment which is given in a book that is you just take a bottle okay you just uh, keep a piece of paper on the bottle so what happens here is again due to gravitational force and secondly due to the uh, air pressure that is exerted on the paper uh, the paper is uh, actually uh, hold by the mouth of the bottle when i blow air first i'm going for a gentle blow so there is no change okay so because already you have a pressure that is exerted inside the bottle towards the paper and there is a pressure that is exerted uh, i mean above the paper so both are equal so there is no change okay so since both are equal so the paper is uh, standing on the bottle okay it is uh, uh, present on the bottle now i'm going for a force okay what happens now that's it so what happens when i blow air on this uh, paper so you come across uh, my force is more compared to the pressure that is exerted above the paper and below the paper the pressure that is exerted above the paper uh, from the air or from the atmosphere and the pressure that is uh, exerted from the bottle so that is collapsed and so what happens the paper falls so this is very simple experiment and uh, again I, again this is to prove the force of the storm okay so this is to prove even though you have an atmospheric pressure that is ex exerted and that is maintained all over the earth you, when when there is a force of wind when there is a more force what happens all this balance are collapsed okay that is the result of storm or cyclone so so i think uh, let me finish with today's session with this very simple concepts okay so 
I hope you understand this. Okay, never, never mind. Uh, I'm taking only simple concepts. Never mind. I'm taking only two pages or three pages. But uh, these concepts should uh, uh, enter into your mind, enter into your heart, such that you don't forget these concepts. And these concepts should be applied in your daily life. These concepts should be applied in your day-to-day -day life. Okay, so in various uh, different fields, you may you, you you need not to be a scientist to apply all these things. You may be a doctor or you may be an engineer or you may be a um, businessman or a politician or a, an officer like an IAS or IPS, whatever it is. But in your life, if you are facing certain uh, issues, you can apply these concepts based on that you can take a measure, you can take a step and you can save many people in this world. So this is why you are learning physics, you are learning science. Uh, in general, you are educated. So this education to, should make you to uh, make a better human being, not simply uh, learning whatever that is in the book, vomiting or copying in your exams, getting uh, uh, scoring more marks, scoring great ranks, but not following certain uh, um, rules and regulations to be a human. If you don't, if you are not following certain rules and regulations which a human should follow, for example, whatever it is, it may be on the road or it may be in your house or it may be in your office, etc. It's a mere waste in being educated. So even illiterates who doesn't know anything about uh, these things, they also do the same. And if you do the same, that is, there is nothing a uh, uh, difference between you people and uh, uh, illiterates or uh, uh, maybe other who are, who are not educated or others who have, who have not gone to school at all okay so there should be something in, in you okay some moral life that is what you are learning in the name of english i mean in the name of language or maths or science or social value education computer science gk etc everything is there to inculcate some values in you your parents may say say, say, may say anything your friends may say anything but you should be holding certain values which should not be changed by anybody or anything. So that is the significance of a student. That is the significance of uh, you people. Okay, keeping that in mind, uh, you just uh, uh, learn, uh, go through this uh, two pages and understand uh, uh, the concepts that are given, understand the experiment. Okay, so thank you. God bless.